Hello everyone and welcome to today's live stream. So glad that you could make it. Uh, happy Thanksgiving and I want to say that I'm so excited about doing these live streams again. Um, you know I had done a lot of them back in 2020 and then I had taken a long break from them but uh, last week's, or excuse me, not last week's, but the previous live stream we did a few weeks ago for the Maple Leaf uh, went so well. I got such a great response from you all. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I'm just so pumped to be here. And in fact, so this class tonight was kind of impromptu. Uh, I just learned this turkey model on Sunday morning, this past Sunday. And then by the end of the day, I was convinced that I wanted to try to teach it as a live stream class. Because I'd been folding them all, all afternoon. I'm like, you know, this is a cool model. I think my fans would enjoy making this too. Okay. So then by Sunday night, Monday morning, got all my publicity together and pushed out. So I apologize for the somewhat late notice. Um, they won't always be such last minute announcements. But um, even if you couldn't make it for the live stream, at least the recording is there for you to watch down the road. So hey, everyone. Hey, Rebecca. Welcome back. Hello, Liz and Gwen. Thank you so much for being here. So glad you could make it. Also, if it's your first time here, uh, we're really excited to have you. Um, speaking of giving you fair notice about stuff that's coming up, uh, I want to share uh, this coming, not this coming, next week, Friday, December 1st, will be my next live stream. Uh, and that'll take place at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so noon, if you're on the east side of the U.S., and of course that's 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and we're going to be making Sonobe units, and we're going to be exploring this variation that makes this really cool uh, sort of stripe. We're going to be looking at different uh, configurations of the units. Um, the Sonobe unit is a really great introductory modular uh, system, and there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with it. And I'm also going to be sharing different uh, tips and techniques for preparing paper, especially if you're making a whole lot of units for a very big assembly. Uh, a few, few shortcuts that I can show you that'll help speed up the process of manufacturing all those units. So yeah, just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Hope you can make that. Again, that's uh, Friday, December 1st coming up. Also, at the next live stream next week, I've got an exciting announcement. And I'm not going to say much about it right now, but I will say I'm really excited about it. So tune in next time to find out uh, what this big announcement is. And um, I also want to let you know that I actually have a special offer for you as well. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it right now. I want, I want to jump into the turkey here in just a second. I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping first. But um, yeah, from now through the end of December, I'm offering 50% off private one-on-one -on -one and group lessons. And those can be done either virtually, like using the same setup that I'm using now here uh, for the live stream. Or if you're in the neighborhood here uh, in Oberlin, Ohio, we can do them here in my studio at Fold Space Origami Studio. And I provide the paper, even if it's virtual, I'll mail paper to you if you're in the United States. And um, I, yeah, I'm gonna talk more about it at the end of the live stream. I, I didn't wanna get into too many details, but uh, I'm also gonna send out an email about it here shortly. So yeah, all right. Um, let's jump into this model, shall we? So before we, talk about the model itself, let's talk about the, the book that it came from. So this was featured in Samuel Randlett's Best of Origami, which I believe was first published in 1973. And if you didn't know, Samuel Randlett is pretty important in the history of origami. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit from his Wikipedia page. American origami artist who helped develop the modern system for diagramming origami folds. Together with Robert Harbin, he developed the notation originally introduced by Akira Yoshizawa to form what is now called the Yoshizawa Ranlet system. And this was first described in Samuel Ranlet's Art of Origami, which came out much earlier than this. I think that was 1961. Yes. And this, again, 1973. 
Uh, but yeah, Samuel Randley, really interesting guy. He was a music professor. He taught piano lessons. He was also interested in magic. Uh, and uh, so yeah, so one thing I do want to mention though is that there's a really interesting interview with Samuel Randlett that was conducted by my buddy Mark Kirschenbaum. And it's, it's on the website or, origamimuseum.org. I'm going to drop the link here in the chat and I will also link it down in the description once we're done with the live stream. Okay, But I highly recommend you go read this article. It's really interesting and he talks a little bit about the intersection of magic and origami. Um, one thing he mentions is that um, you know, it kind of like it kind of appeals to the same personality type. Those who are into magic and origami, uh, because it has it, it. People are interested in the ingenious solutions of you know, like doing this trick or this transformation. Uh, so I, I highly recommend you go check it out. I just dropped the link in the chat. But yes, yeah, so this book, the best of origami, it's actually a compilation of models, but that includes other designers. There's a whole lot of other designers. And so the creator of this turkey that we're going to fold today was actually designed by Frederick Rom. Okay. And so, um, oh yeah, I was just going to show you. So here it is in the book. You can see these elegant diagrams. Now, one thing I want to add, <laughs> here's the thing. They give Samuel all this credit. And actually in the interview, he says, ah, they give me too much credit for this. So he kind of deflects that. But it was his first wife, Jean Randlett, who actually did the drawings for this. So, I mean, was it really him or was it her? I mean, who knows? Maybe it was at his direction, but uh, I don't know. But what's cool here in the back, uh, there is little, little bios on each of the different uh, contributors. And I'm going to read the one here by, uh, that, that's about Frederick Rom, or also known as Fred Rom. Uh, I'm going to jump ahead here. So, um, he held a number of internal combustion engine patents, which is pretty cool. Uh, Mr. Rom has been a professional musician and a semi-professional magician, yeah, as well as an amateur ham radio enthusiast. <laughs> I love it. His hobbies include science fiction and puzzles. As a boy, Mr. Rom learned to fold the lover's knot and the water bomb. <laughs> Get this. When he stopped smoking in 1959, he began to fold these figures to keep his hands occupied. Cool. Okay. Useful tool for quitting smoking. Good. Very good for you, Fred. Then, without knowledge that origami existed outside of these two models, he proceeded to invent the art and carry it to a high level of sophistication. So that's kind of what we call a lone folder in the origami community. Somebody who just kind of folds in isolation for a period of time and then they ultimately find the origami community and, re and unite with uh, like-minded uh, you know, individuals who also love paper folding. Um, so yes, he, there's six models of his in this book. And I say, you know, hands down, the turkey is th the best one. It's my favorite one, you know, it's subjective, but I think it's the, uh, the strongest model of the group. Um, one thing I do wanna show you though, Fred Rom is also, I think, very well known for this other model really nifty. Now, I didn't fold this, but he designed this Star of David from a $1 bill. How cool is that? Now, I didn't make this. Um, my friend Charles made this and gave it to me many years ago. But um, yeah, one of these days I'll get around to folding it. But yeah, I think Fred Rom is very well known for that particular model. All right. Okay, so let's talk paper selection. Now, I want to show you this. I folded these two examples from a paper called Biotope. And Biotope is this really nice Japanese paper that is sold at origamishop.com. And in fact, I think uh, they're having a 60% off sale. Is it 60% off? It, it's, it, maybe it's not 60. I, it's some percentage off. I might have just misspoke there, but it's, they're having a sale on Biotope over at origamishop.com. Don't quote me on the amount. Um, anyhow. Uh, I love this paper. It's generally pretty thin. And um, by the way, this version here, I actually wet folded this model. Now we're not going to talk too much about wet folding here right now, but um, yeah, I had my spray bottle. I was kind of misting it as I was folding it. 
and uh, it made it yielded a very great result. And the um, the paper layers tend to stay together better when you dampen them. Also, there are some parts of the model where it gets a little thick, and so the, the water kind of helps soften it. So anyway, we're not really going to talk about wet folding today, but I am planning on doing a video. Let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see a, 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 a lesson on wet folding. Okay. And uh, da -da -da -da, here we go. Cool. So I also want to show you these. So these were folded out of, um, where to go? Oh, here it is. Okay. This packing paper that my friend Charles prepared. In fact, Charles is the one who showed me how to fold this model initially. But yeah, he found some packing paper and he saved it because this model, um, you, want, you, you really want to have paper that's the same color on both sides, uh, on each side. So, because um, the color change that you get if you're using Kami, eh, it's like, it doesn't really do anything for the model. Um, but by the way, if you're just learning it tonight and all you have is Kami, that's fine. I mean, just learn it with the Kami, but know that you know it's, it's nice to have paper that's the same color on both sides. And so, um, yeah, he cut the paper into squares. Notice it's still kind of wrinkly. Uh, and it doesn't really matter because, I mean, turkeys have kind of a disheveled look about them anyway. So it kind of like works out. Um, but um, yeah, um, it's, it, it works pretty well. So that's what these were folded from here. Now the paper does kind of want to splay out a little bit. Like these guys, they're kind of wanting to start doing the splits here, but they still stand up pretty well on their own. Um, and so that works pretty well too. So you don't have to get super fancy with the type of paper you use. Speaking of paper, Gwen, thank you for uh, mentioning it's 30% off on, on Biotope at origamishop.com. Okay, yes. Um, all right, so tonight I'm going to be using this sheet of paper. Let's see, how big is this? This is, uh, it's just under eight inches by eight inches. This is a German paper called Folia that uh, is pretty common. It's also very inexpensive. Um, it's not my favorite paper, but I think it's going to work pretty well. Well, I know it's going to work pretty well because that's what I folded this particular uh, turkey out of. Um, but I like it because it's thin, okay? And I'm not going to need to do the web folding for this type of paper uh, either. So, uh, without further ado, by the way, hi Brent, hi Hisako, welcome back. So glad to have you here. All right. Now this model is based in 22 and a half degree um, design, okay? So a lot of the Japanese traditional models you can think of, like the traditional crane is folded in 22 and a half degree. And in fact, what we're going to do here, we're going to make half of a bird base. And if you tuned in to the last stream where we folded the maple leaf, you'll know that we used a different, a slightly different approach than the more traditional approach of making bird base creases. And we're going to do that again tonight. So let's, let's do this. Let's begin with the paper oriented like so. And we'll take the bottom corner and match it up to the top corner. Line those edges up as best you can. Hold before you fold and slide down the middle. Get that crease started. And once you've got the crease started, you can finish it by going all the way out to one side, back to the middle, all the way out to the other. And I'm just going to gently sharpen that crease. And now we're going to rotate the model so it looks like an arrow pointing to one direction or the other. It doesn't matter which one because we are going to now open the paper so that the crease is running vertically. And now we'll take this bottom corner here and match it up to the top. Hold before you fold, slide down the middle, all the way out to one side, back to the middle, and all the way out to the other. And sharpen that crease. Now we will open up the paper and next we want to flip the paper over to the other side. So we're flipping it like a pancake so that now those two diagonal creases exist as mountain folds. And next we will take this bottom edge and you might need to push down in the middle a little bit, but take the bottom edge of your square 
and match it up to the top edge of your square. Line up those corners and edges, hold before you fold, slide down the middle, and go all the way out to one side, back to the middle, and all the way out to the other side. Give a nice sharp crease. From there, we rotate the model again, and of course in origami, we call this a book fold. So open your books to page two, class. Ah, <laughs> yes, that is a bit of a joke, but also my way of having you orient the paper so that the book crease is now running vertically, so that we may now take the bottom edge of our open book and match it up to the top edge of your open book. We now have all the creases in place to make a preliminary base, also known as a square base. So if we take the two sides here and we let the model kind of open and we squeeze those corners together so that all four corners of the paper are meeting at the top, then that allows us to flatten the model by taking two flaps on one side, two flaps on the other. And I always like to kind of iron those creases out a little bit once I've done the collapse because sometimes they need to I'll readjust a little bit. Okay, so now that we have our square base or preliminary base, um, we're going to put creases in for half of a bird base. In other words, I mean, it's like doing a petal fold on just this one side of the paper. And of course, you could go about doing your petal fold in the more traditional way where you pre crease by bringing the, the cut edge flaps up to the center and then you do some reversing and I much prefer this other method, so let's do that. We're going to open up the preliminary base, okay, and we're just going to pick one kind of half of the paper. I'm going to do it here on this lower half, this lower half, the big triangle here. So what we need to do, we need to put angle bisectors in that measure 22 and a half degrees, hence the terminology I brought up earlier. Um, we need to do it here, and then we need to do it here on each side. So you can do those in whatever order. I'm just going to start in the middle and I'm going to take this raw edge up to the crease in the middle and remember we're not going to fold all the way. So we line it up, line up that edge with the center crease line and hopefully, I mean, if, if you get it aligned pretty well through here, you should be pretty good at the corner. I always like to gently run my finger along that corner before I really commit. But then when we're making our crease, we're going to stop here. We're not going to go all the way. We're going to stop at the book crease, right? So we do this on one side and I'm just going to keep, well, here, let's do the, let's make it symmetrical. Let's just do the other half of that flap. Same deal. Match it up to the crease line and gently get that corner started and then fold only to the book crease here to here. And then if we unfold, okay, so those are our first two angle bisectors at 22 and a half degrees, which is of course half of 45 degrees, right? So now we're going to take this 45 degree angle and bisect it, and that's going to connect with the end of the crease that we made here. So I can take this raw edge of the paper up to that diagonal, line it up as carefully as I can, and kind of lightly run my finger along the corner to get it started until I'm happy with the placement. And once I'm satisfied, I can go ahead and commit to that crease. And there it connects with the previous, well, one of the previous creases. And we'll do the same thing on this side. So take this raw edge to the line in the middle, kind of ease it into place there, and then make your crease. Hello to Beyond the Crane. Thank you for tuning in on YouTube. All right, so there we go. So we've got half of a bird base. But we need to now put the bird, you know, that half of a bird base into action. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually rotate the model so that those creases that we were just working on are up here. And 
I'm going to take, whoop, it's at, at the top. I'm going to take these two side corners and I'm going to bring them down like so. Okay. So when I do that, I got, I do have to reverse a couple of the crease segments and those are right here and right here. Those little segments do need to reverse, but as you start to kind of collapse the paper down, you can kind of push that in. And look, you start to get that diamond shape. And you can either, actually, I kind of like to just collapse it down to the bottom point first. And you just get a much pointier, more precise uh, point, a tip <laughs> uh, down here. And to complete the sort of petal fold form, and I love this about this, this technique because you're going to make a hinge that just automatically finds its way to these side corners. I'm just going to take this flap and just flip it up. The paper just knows what to do, and you get a perfect alignment with these two side corners, which you don't always get when you're doing the petal fold the, um, the old-fashioned way, <laughs> shall we say. Okay, so we've got one half of a bird base, which begs the question, what are we going to do with the other half? of the base. Well, interestingly, we're going to take the model and we're going to flip it over to this side. And now we are going to use those kite flat folds, kind of like you do when you're making a pedal fold, except this time we're doing them upside down from where we were before. In other words, we're going to take each of these creased edges here and here, and we're going to, we're going to bring each of them to the center line. Okay, so this is where they're going. Now, when I actually make the fold, I like to fold up and away from myself. So I'm gonna kind of put it on its side there. So I can take this edge, and we're making another bisector, another 22 and a half degree bisector here. Oh wait, sorry. Yes, sorry, yeah, yeah. I've started to second guess myself. We're good, we're good. I was like, wait, sorry. <laughs> okay, so we got that. Hello, Alexis. Thanks for tuning in. And I'm going to do this one, but I'm going to rotate this edge. Now it goes to the middle. So it's like making a kite base. So that's why I refer to these as kite flaps. Okay. But they are radiating from the center point of the original sheet of paper. Okay. Now those two creases are pre-creases. So we need to basically take these flaps and we're going to inside reverse fold these flaps underneath this layer. So I'm going to kind of lift this up. I'm going to let it open up a bit. Okay. And I need to reverse two creases on each half of the model. Okay. If we look at it from the side here and open that up, you see there are three creases. One, two, three. They make this nice isosceles triangle here. Now, we don't need to worry about reversing the one in the far back, but we do need to reverse these two. And you can do those in whatever order. I tend to like to reverse this valley fold first into a mountain. So here's what that looks like. You're going to kind of just find the crease and pinch it into a mountain, okay? And then this crease in the middle needs to reverse into a valley, but it's kind of easier to do that now that it's in between two mountains. <laughs> Pretty clever. So we kind of reverse that tuck that in, and voila, <laughs> it has disappeared into the model, and we can do the same thing on this side. Open the paper up just enough so that you can pinch this valley into a mountain fold, and then push this crease in the middle in so that it reverses into a valley fold. Oh. And we do want to make sure all of our creases are meeting up here in a nice fashion, but there we go. So you kind of get this like teardrop shape, which is an upside down kite too. But yeah, so there we go. So this is our base. And I guess what you could say is that this half of the base is kind of like a frog base. I mean, these are creases that you would do in preparation for making a frog base. So this turkey is part bird base, part frog base. 
Okay. Let's continue. So now we're going to flip. Oh, it's, I mean, just speaking of the base, one thing I wanted to mention too, I mean, this part of the model will become the tail eventually. And then this flap here will eventually become, um, the, the end of the flap becomes the neck and the head and the waddle. But we have to narrow this flap first. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to flip the model over to the side with the long diamond, okay? And you know, just so for reference, so you can see this point is underneath here, okay? Just so you can see where we're at. I mean, this kind of, this orients you too. Uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna create some more angle bisectors down here with these two angles, each half of this, of these two angles, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna take this edge to the center line. So once again, I'm gonna put it on its side so I can kind of grab that edge. And there's a few layers going on here, so you really gotta kind of grip those and pull them up. And in this case, you might wanna leave a tiny, tiny little gap between this edge and the center line. Now it doesn't need to be very much and you don't want it to be too much either. But uh, this is gonna help us with the next move once we've done the other angle bisector on the other side. And this is very much like when you make a traditional crane. You narrow these flaps with these same kind of angle bisectors, but then you gotta be careful so that the paper doesn't like try to bump into itself, okay? So, so I've got that side done and I'm gonna rotate it so I can do the same thing on this side here. Move that towards the middle. Notice I kind of run my finger along the corner like I always do. And don't worry about it being a super sharp point because one of the nice things about this model is that this tip, this is eventually what becomes the waddle, which you kind of want to look kind of weird and wrinkly to begin with. So it's, it's nice that like the tip of this, it's okay if it gets a little, little wrinkly. <laughs> okay, cool. So we've narrowed the flap. Ah, it's looking very sleek and aerodynamic now. Now we're gonna take these two flaps, the topmost flaps here, and we're just gonna bring them together, kind of like we're closing a book, okay? So what I'm gonna do too, I'm gonna put my finger inside this flap, and this is why that gap can be helpful, because now that we're trying to close up the model, um, it gives you a little bit more room to work with inside, okay? So I've taken those two halves, I've brought them up so that they're vertical, okay? And then now, while holding those together up here, we're gonna take the rest of the flaps underneath and we want to fold them down symmetrically. So those just come down and here we go. And I think this is just a really nifty little form here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And yeah, so here we go. So we've narrowed the flap that eventually becomes the neck, head, beak, and waddle. And now we're gonna do some work over here. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to take the model, I'm going to flip it around here. Okay, so, so here's the kind of this long triangle. And I wanna point out a couple of landmarks that are very important for the next step, okay? So um, I'm gonna kind of tuck this under the pocket here, but there's a point under here, which is there. So you see there's a little pocket here. This point right on the edge is one of our landmarks. Another landmark we have, now this, we might not hit this mark exactly, but we're kind of aiming for it. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hit it exactly, but this corner up here. This is our second landmark. And basically we're gonna be making a crease that connects those two, okay? But there's a third point inside the model that we have to, um, to work with while doing this step. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this part of this creased edge here and I'm gonna to start to bend it up this way. Now remember those two points that we are trying to align, um, we flip this up, 
But here's the thing, inside the model, there's a point in here, right in here where the paper can't fold any farther. So you wanna be careful not to push it too far and accidentally rip the paper, but we do kinda of need to butt right up against that point of resistance. So as I'm folding this up, I'm still being mindful of, whoops, this point down here, but as I fold this up and out, I wanna kinda of pull the paper, flatten it down, while also still trying to hit the other landmark that I pointed out up here, which is this corner. But don't worry about it hitting it exactly. Really, you wanna to try to kinda of just push it up as far as the paper will comfortably allow here, and we make our crease. I think the most important part here is that we are connecting with this corner uh, pretty accurately. If you're not right on that corner, if you're a little bit to this side of it, there's a step coming up next that doesn't want to work very well unless you're getting it to this point, okay? So let's repeat on the back side. So I'm going to take the model, I'm going to flip it over side to side. And essentially we're going to be lining up with the flat behind it, but I would still pay more attention to the point here and then ultimately the point up here. So here's where this crease is going to fall. So we take that flap, we start to flip it up. There's a lot more layers down here we have to deal with. And so as long as we kind of aim for this corner and that one worked pretty nicely, I have to say on mine. I did a quick fold earlier, same paper, but I was moving kind of fast and I, I kind of, it was hard to get this point. I think because I was kind of misaligned in a previous step, but okay. One thing I really like about this model is that it looks very elegant in form as we're going through the folding sequence. Um, this is just a, like a fun model to fold. There's some nifty folds here. There's some coming up here that uh, I think you're gonna like. Okay, so now if we take the model and we rotate it this way, it kind of looks like a hummingbird. Hmm, how about that? Now, we're gonna take this long skinny flap here and we're going to kind of do an inside, we're, we're, we're almost gonna undo this inside reverse fold that's already in the paper. So it's kind of like a reverse inside reverse fold. <laughs> so the way that's gonna look is if we kind of open this up a little bit here and then we get underneath it here. Look here, there's actually a little pocket. There's a pocket. And then we get it underneath, and so now we're reversing the middle crease back to this mountain fold, and here we are. So now we get this like nice, long, straight form here. And this little triangle jutting out underneath, that's this part here just for reference, okay? You can kind of see where this is going. All right, hope everybody's enjoying themselves because now the real fun begins, <laughs> which is another way of me saying that we're gonna do kind of a tricky step here, but this is a really nifty maneuver. Uh, and we're gonna do what's called a spread squash. Now don't worry. In my experience, spread squashes can be kind of challenging, but sometimes they just work pretty easily. And I'd say in this example, it actually works a little bit easier than, um, than other instances. So here's what we're gonna do. Now, I'm going to point out there's a pocket. You see this pocket here? What we're gonna do, we're gonna take this flap and we're gonna stand it straight up like this, okay? So here's that pocket again and why don't you watch me f do the squash sink or excuse me spread squash wrong word spread squash uh, before you do yours because there's a reference point that I want you to see um, which is back here okay so I'm, I'm just going to kind of point it out here and then I'm going to do it and then you'll see what I'm talking about here so I'm going to first kind of push my finger inside here a little bit and notice how now I'm using these two fingers. I'm going to start to kind of spread this a little bit. And there's also a point here. See how I'm moving my finger here? 
what's going to happen is if you, as you start to spread this and flatten it, you, this pocket sort of spreads out into this little, it's like a pillow, okay? Now the reference that I want to give you, uh, also you can just kind of, you can kind of, kind of pet it a little bit to kind of smooth it out here, but if you kind of push underneath, see I'm kind of getting under into the pocket here, I'm kind of pushing it down. See if you can get this corner of the pillow to meet the edge of that triangle that's sticking out here. That's a good placement for that. Uh, and, and then once you're there, everything else is just gonna kind of automatically go where it's supposed to go. Now I did get a little, there's like a little divot there in the corner, that happens sometimes. Um, it's normal, but no big deal, okay? So now we get this cool triangle and this uh, represents the wing, one of the wings of the turkey, okay? So if you were watching and um, you haven't done it yet, go ahead and go for it. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip it over to the other side and I'll do it again. So here's our pocket. It's coming from the direction of the skinny tip here. I'm gonna bring that flap vertical, use my pointer finger, kind of start to spread those layers apart. And then I'm gonna kind of, see I'm gonna use two fingers to kind of like push this down on each side. And as I do that, I start to get that little pillow forming. And you can kind of nudge it this way a little bit. Yeah to try and connect with this edge. It doesn't have to, but I think it's just like a nice spot for that to land. And you kind of maximize the, well, I don't know if you really maximize it, but it just gives you a good wing shape. Um, once again, I got a little divot. I think it's because, you know, by like trying to like turn it and force that corner to land here, it tends to do that. It doesn't always do that for me, but um, it seemed to do it both times here. So there's our pocket on one side. Here's our pocket on the other side. And congratulations, you just did some spread squashes. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. Next. I want to draw your attention to this line here, okay? This line that I'm tracing with the pencil is going to be your hinge for the next step. And we're gonna make a squash fold. So if I get behind this layer here, and I'm kind of underneath here as well, I wanna fold the model along that natural hinge that's already in the paper, okay? And so as I fold that layer down flat, I start to get this triangle. Now what I'd recommend is, now there's, there's two points. There's a point, sorry, there's a point up here where this crease hits this edge here, and then you've got this corner here. Um, I think it's a little bit better to try to, well, I don't know, you want to kind of get this bottom corner aligned. You're going to squash along this way. You get this triangle. Um, don't worry too much about where it's going up here, but it's going to roughly aim for this corner here. So if you want to see that again, behind the flap, pull this down on the hinge, and I squash that flap, being mindful of connecting the crease to this corner here, and then I sharpen the squash fold. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and do that on the back. Flip it over side to side. Here's our hinge, okay? Get underneath that, we're gonna fold that down. And that's gonna start our squash fold. We're just being mindful of that horizontal hinge. And then we're looking at this point down here. I'm gonna try to line that up as best we can. And then this fold going up, sometimes it does hit that point on its own, but it doesn't have to. We've got some wiggle room here. Very good. All right. 
Now we're going to make some more angle bisectors, and this time we're going to be bisecting this angle here. And to do that, we're going to bring this raw edge, this cut edge here of the paper, and we're going to bring it up to meet that horizontal edge. And we're really we're looking at this edge here. That's what you're trying to line up with. And bring it right to the edge. We don't want any gaps here. Um, bring that right up to that horizontal edge. Um, these flaps here that we're working on now, these are going to eventually become the legs of the turkey. So we do that. And then we're going to kind of do it inside reverse fold, but we're going to swivel the paper a little bit. So what I mean by that is we're going to kind of unfold this a little bit here. And then we're going to, we're going to open up this pocket a little bit. And we've already got this nice valley crease here, which is just going to, it's just going to do its thing. But now we're tucking behind this flap. But we're not just rever inside reversing by reversing this. We're actually going to bring the crease all the way up to this edge at, at about this point. So this is what that looks like. Now be sure we're, we're pivoting from, there's this vertex that we're pivoting from right here. So open the flap, let that valley fold do its thing, okay? But then I'm gonna kinda keep pushing the paper inside the flap so that this mountain crease I'm looking at here eventually connects. Whoop. You have to kind of smooth it out on the inside while you're doing this, but it'll eventually connect up here. And so now you can see I've got this crease going here instead of where the original pre-crease was. And don't worry too much about what it looks like on the inside because you're not really gonna see that. But I mean, do try to make it as clean as you can. Um, and um, yeah, I just looked over at the chat and um, yes, you're right, Brent. Brent's not wrong. We're having squash with our turkey. <laughs> I was a little late. But <laughs> I know. Um, okay, cool. So now we're going to do the same thing on the back side. We're going to flip it over the other side. We've got this edge here and we're going to bring it to that horizontal line. We had a lot more puns flying out through the chat the last stream. Uh, so let's have one. Let's see if you can think of any. All right. So we did our pre-crease for that angle bisector. And now we can tuck that flap inside. We're kind of pushing the paper here in a bit farther than the pre-crease to make a mountain fold that connects with this point here. And then we just kind of flatten everything out. <laughs> okay, before we go any further, let's take a safety break. All right? Let's just kind of uh, stretch out a little bit. Maybe stand up for a few seconds if you need to. That's the thing about doing these virtual classes. Uh, both you and I should take breaks. Okay. Whew. Feeling good. Let's keep going. Now we could go in and we, we could work on any number of parts of the turkey because we've still got stuff to do with the head and neck, the tail, and the legs. Okay, so we can do this in any order. Let's do some work on the tail. All right, so pick up the model here. You'll see we've got this edge right here, okay? And we've got it on both sides. We're going to use this edge to make an inside reverse fold for this flap. Now you can either just go for it. You can just kind of open up the paper and inside reverse fold along and just find, find those edges by pushing down and in, reversing that center crease. But if you'd like, you can just pre-crease. So we can use this edge and fold this flap over the edge as far down as it will go. Make a nice sharp crease, unfold that. And then now when we open it up here, we can just reverse two of those creases. So 
so that the sort of V shape are both mountain creases and then the center crease reverses from a mountain into a valley. Yes, res9695 is right. Don't forget to hydrate. Thank you for that reminder. Very good. Okay. So we just inside reverse folded this. Okay. Now the next fold is, uh, it's a bit of a rat fold. And for those who take classes with me, you know, uh, I use this term I uh, learned from Michael LaFosse. Rat stands for right about there. Okay, so it's a little bit of an estimate. Although we do have a landmark. One of our landmarks are, actually these two points are a landmark, but basically we're gonna make another inside reverse fold. Now we're not gonna do a pre-crease for this one. We want to keep these two mountain folds in place. And we're gonna make an inside reverse fold that will connect with these two points but it's only going to go, it's going to go to about here, right about there, <laughs> inside the model, okay? Here's what that looks like. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of keep it pinched here because I don't want to lose this little bit of valley fold that I have going on here. So if I get underneath here and I re-reverse this back to a mountain and I pinch it, I've got a little bit of wiggle room here. I can kind of start to, you know, pull this up or down, just kind of figure out where I want it to land here. But remember, I want to try to also connect with these corners here. So I gotta pull the back part up enough. So I'm getting a crease that connects to that corner without pulling the flap up too far. And then inside here, you can kind of see about how far I'm going. It's not important uh, ex to be exact or anything. Um, but once you've done that, we've now successfully changed the angle of this triangle. So we've, so we've gone from here to kind of being a little bit more this way, right? I'll open it again here so you can kind of see, see how that crease connects all the way whoop, here, but it doesn't quite go all the way here. We've got a little gap here. Just fold to taste. Uh, one thing I should have mentioned at the beginning of the fold uh, that I meant to say was that this is another one of those models where it helps to, to fold it a few times. There are a few rat folds that, are, you know, you have to kind of get a feel for where they go. Um, but uh, once you've done it a few times, I think you'll get the hang of it. Okay, let's continue with the tail up here. We've got an angle right here. And we're basically going to trisect the angle. Now this doesn't have to be exact by any means. We're just going to eyeball it. But again, here's our angle that we are subdividing. And what we're going to do, we're going to make some pre-creases. So we're going to take this creased edge and we're going to you know, pivot anchoring from this point towards this edge, but we're not going all the way because remember we're trisecting. We want like rough thirds. So to do that, once we kind of get this here, Basically what we're looking for is a wedge that's about the same side, size on each here and here. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and make that fold here. Okay, so I just took that edge, folded it roughly a third, and then I'm gonna pick it up and I'm going to mount and fold along this edge here. So now we're going back the other direction and if you want, you could flip it over to the other side. Actually, that's probably easier. If you flip it over to the other side, we've got this edge here, and then we can bring it down to that edge and crease. Okay. And then we're going to unfold a bit. And now if we can open this up, and we've got some pre-creases, and we are going to reverse two creases yes two creases okay so this is a kind of an accordion type fold or sometimes you can think of this as a corrugation in a way um, so we're going to have alternating mountains and valleys so we want to have a mountain in the middle going from here to here and so then we want a valley on each side so we've already got the valley over here so we actually i mean depending on what side you folded it to the side that has the valley next, we don't have to worry about that side. So we're gonna to go to the 
other side here because now I have mountain, 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 mountain. So I'm going to, but here's the thing. It's a little bit easier if we skip that one. I'm going to go to this one, this valley, and I'm going to go ahead and make that a mountain fold. So I'm going to kind of bend that down. I'm going to pinch it a bit. And that gives me this mountain fold. And kind of like what we did before, once we've got two mountain folds and we're trying to get a valley in between, it becomes a little bit easier just to kind of push that in, find that existing crease, and then kind of collapse it down into that accordion form or fan fold, you see? So again, we want it to look symmetrical with a mountain crease here in the middle. And then the next two out, the two spokes radiating out to each side, those are both valleys here and here. And then we have two more mountains here and here. Okay, and then that gives us our little sort of radial corrugation. Okay, now the tail is kind of pointy, so we're going to round it off a little bit. And I really like how this shaping works here. So, first, I want to point out that uh, there's a the end of this valley crease here, and then the same point on the opposite side here. We're going to make a mountain fold that connects those two points. In other words, we're going to take this tip here at the top and we're going to fold it back. And we're just looking to connect the edge of the paper with the ends of those valley creases. So I usually like to do this as, you know, by like pinching a mountain fold into the model. Um, there. You could, you could flip it over and do it on the back. I don't usually do it from the back though. I like doing it um, th from this side. Um, so there we go. All right, so we, we've blunted the, the corner, right? But then we've got these two corners as well that we can also do basically the same thing. And this is pretty neat. So, um, so there's our, our middle line. But then if we kind of turn it to its side over here, right? So we're going to do the same thing here, but we're going to do it from this point and this point here and here. So again, we're connect now we're connecting these two mountain creases and we just kind of fold the tip back a little bit. Just try to find those two corners here and here. Okay. So I've done it here. Now I'm going to do the same with this point here. Fold that back a bit. Okay, so now we, we have a point once again, but it's not quite as pointy, okay? And then from here, of course, we want to refold that radial corrugate, corrugation and just give it a good pinch here from the side. And there we go. Okay. Cool. So we're pretty much done with the tail. Until the very end of the model, we will, we'll, we'll open these flaps out, but we don't want to do this yet. But basically, we're going to open these out a little bit. And we got this nice little turkey tail. And for you mycologists out there, no, this is not false turkey tail. This is true turkey tail. All right. Anyway. <laughs> okay, cool. So let's work on the neck, the head, the beak, and the waddle, okay? So draw your attention to this point right here. We're gonna do an outside reverse fold. We're basically gonna take this flap and we're gonna flip it around so that it then points back roughly at this angle, okay? Now, to do that, if you kinda open this out a little bit and put your thumb underneath here. So my thumb's inside, I'm kinda pinching it like so. And basically we're trying to kinda just take this in bend back. Now in order to do that, of course, this long mountain crease edge is going to reverse into a valley. And so I'm just going to kind of push that up. Now here's, you might want to watch me do this so you can see what we're aiming for, because this can land in a number of places. But you see how I kind of I found a point here. Basically, if you continue this line all the way up, to this edge, that gives you the, like basically where you want the vertex for this outside reverse fold to be, okay? Again, follow the line from here up to there. And then from there, that's where we're gonna kind of bend it up. 
And as we start to push it back and pinch it shut, you'll see that if we get it in the right place, we end up kind of with a nice kind of continuation of this edge. And of course, this is the breast of the turkey. And so um, we just kind of get that in place, you know, roughly aiming for that point here, and then give it a good pinch. And it's funny how just that one step right there really starts to make the model look more like a turkey. Okay. Now for the head and the waddle, we're just going to be making a couple more reverse folds. And I guess this is another outside reverse fold. Yeah, this is another outside reverse fold. So I'm going to kind of pinch from here, put my thumb on this edge here, and I'm just going to kind of pull the, the head down and forward. And um, as I do that, I'm kind of also making a kind of a V shape. So you have to kind of adjust these here. But we, we want to make it this kind of long because we want to give ourselves enough paper for the waddle. So this is another rat, another rat fold. Um, fold this to taste. If you don't like it the first time, you can always adjust it. Okay. So you get to about here. And because it's a turkey, I like to kind of angle, I like the head to kind of angle down a little bit. All right. And so there's that. And now for the waddle, uh, an inside reverse fold. We're going to just kind of take about half of that uh, tip here and I'm going to kind of bend it down while using my fingernail, my thumbnail, to kind of push that in. So I'm actually reversing there in the middle. You see how I kind of push that in like that and give it a good squeeze. And it's okay, like this is going to kind of overlap just like a real turkey. And once again, it's just really nice that this is supposed to be kind of like weird and wrinkly looking. So <laughs> it is, it's like a really cool effect. So there you go. There's the wattle. All right. Okay, you're all doing great. I know this model is a little bit of a slog when you're learning it from me as I'm teaching it. But once you get it down, it doesn't take quite so long to fold. Okay, now the legs, and then we're done. So right now the legs are sticking kind of straight back. Uh, before we make the legs, I will just say that oftentimes with models like this, like my biggest gripe are the way the legs and the feet work. And often the feet are really small and it, it's hard to make it stand up, but you can get this model to stand up pretty well if you get it just right, but it might take some fidgeting. Um, but one important aspect we want to keep in mind when making the reverse folds for the legs is that is, is the angle. Okay. So what we're going to do is on each of these leg flaps pointing back, I'm going to put my thumb underneath and I'm going to kind of put my pointer finger in here, my index finger. And so I'm going to reverse inside the model. Okay. So I'm, re I'm reversing this mountain crease here into a valley. And there, there is kind of a, a, a point where you can't really go too far in here. It kind of stops you naturally, but here's the angle that you want to pay attention to. So notice this angle here right now, I've got it at roughly a 90 degree angle. Now you don't, you don't want a 90 degree angle, but you don't want to go too much farther in than a 90 degree angle. Again, this is, this is a rat fold. It's, you got to just kind of figure it out yourself, but, um, you don't want to go too far. Like if you're, if you're way over here and you know, where it's like approaching being parallel to this, um, it's not, it's going to want to fall back. The angle won't be quite right. So just kind of look at something a little less than a 90 degree angle, maybe like there. And then we give it a pinch. Hopefully that works. I mean, I, every time I make this turkey, there's no guarantee it's going to stand up. Sometimes I have to mess with it a little bit. That's just kind of uh, the name of the game. Okay. So we're going to do the same with the other leg flap, but I'm going to flip it over. And now I'm just trying to line it up with the first one. Um, that's going to be important in getting it to balance. You want the, you want the legs to be pretty even with one another, regardless of where you put them. So, um, 
I'm going to kind of get the inside reverse fold started, reverse here, I'm going to close that flap, and then see if I can line it up with the first leg, and then give it a pinch. Hopefully that's a good angle. I don't know. I, every time I do this, I'm like, eh, is that enough? <laughs> or, but I think that's pretty good. Um, if you look at this one, man, yeah. we'll see. If it doesn't work, we'll just fix it. Okay, now we need to narrow these thick drumstick legs. <laughs> so, so here's what we're gonna do. And this part, this part, I think, is one of the hardest parts of this model, simply because you kind of have to do it in the air. So we're gonna open it up from the back and we're gonna take each of these edges of the back edge of the leg flaps and we're gonna fold them in towards the middle. Now it doesn't have to go all the way to the middle. Also keep in mind, this part of the paper here, depending on where that inside reverse fold happened, it's gonna kind of stop you from going past a certain point. So open it up. Um, also, you have to kind of like grab both of these layers here while you're doing this. So I'm going to kind of fold that in towards the middle line. And basically, I'm going to, I want it to stay relatively pointy, but I'm going to let this part of the paper kind of dictate how far in this goes. So I've folded half of that in, and now I have to do the other half. Again, you have to kind of bunch these flaps, these layers together while you're folding it to the other side. Okay. And then we close it. And just do whatever you gotta do to kinda smooth that out a little bit. There. Same on the other leg. So I'm going to kind of open it up from here. Get that sort of kite shape. Um, I'm going to start with this side because this tends to be the one that has a limitation to how far it can go. Although this one's actually going up pretty far. I don't know. This it, it varies from model to model depending on where that inside reverse fold happens. As I said, same thing here. Bring this edge to the middle. Now there's this extra layer here that wants, you know, this raw edge that wants to kind of come undone. So that's what I was talking about, about this being kind of tricky because you, you have to kind of do it all in the air. You got to you know, bring these layers together, make sure they don't separate. But just do your best, and it tends to kind of correct itself as you close the flap here. Okay. And now for our next to last step, we're going to fold these points so that they're going forward. And again, as I was saying before, oftentimes in these types of models, you, you end up with these little little feet on, <laughs> that make it really hard to stand the model up on its own. But what's nice about this model is that you can fold these out like pretty far, okay? So we're doing um, another, technically, I guess it's an outside reverse fold. And we're just kind of picking a distance here. I think the longer you make them, the easier it is to make it stand up. And you want to make them roughly parallel to this edge here. But they don't have to be parallel to that either, though. You can also, if, if it helps, you can kind of triangulate the two legs with this point. But here, I'm going to pinch it from behind with my thumb, kind of bring that forward. But we are reversing here. So we're, we're going to kind of pinch this and see here, you know, I, I, now I kind of have a line going from here to this point. And if I, if I angle this just right, now you can go below the point or just to the point, but if need be, you can kind of rest on this front tip. Also, depending on how far, how, like how long you make this flap. But I'm just going to leave that there for now, go back and adjust it if I need to. So I'm going to flip it over to the other side. And it's really important that we try to match the, the, the level here. Because not only does it have a hard time kind of balancing this way, but if it's a little shorter on one leg than the other, 
it tends to want to fall over this way or that. So these legs are just so finicky. It takes a lot of practice, I think. Um, okay, so there. So I'm, again, I'm inside reverse, or excuse me, I'm outside reverse folding. I'm going to try that again. Here. And I'm making the valley crease happens on the top of the flap here. And I'm going to look here. And before I really commit to it, I'm going to make sure they're lined up. And yeah, they look pretty lined up. So now I'll go ahead and pinch. And before I try to stand it up, there was that one other step uh, I had mentioned before where we're going to fan the tail out a little bit. And we can imagine a, a, like a soft valley crease that goes from this point here to where this very wide angle here is right here, like, you know, where the, the tail starts to fan out. So if you, you get kind of behind this here and just kind of softly, just kind of like bend the paper to one side to connect that corner and that corner. And you don't have to make a hard crease, just like a soft kind of opening here. And then of course we want to do the same thing to the other side. Open that here. Yeah. So it kind of opens up. And now for the moment of truth, does it stand? <gasps> da, da da da. Yes, it did. Wow. Okay. Yeah. If it doesn't stand up, just work on it a little bit and try to fold another one or two or three. Um, because this is a fun model, and why well, I think it's fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, now, before we go, I want to talk a little bit about my special offer, okay? So, as I said before, I'm offering a 50% off discount on what I normally charge for one-on-one -on -one and small group lessons. Um, and typically, a lesson lasts for about 90 minutes. And what I'm charging right now for a 90-minute one-on-one lesson is just $50. Uh, and if you want to get a small group together, um, $75, okay? Now, these classes can either be virtual, like we're doing here on, uh, on the live stream, uh, except that we would do it in uh, like, a, like a virtual meeting room, like Google Meet, perchance. And then... I'm going to include paper. So even if we're not, oh yeah, I, I got a little ahead of myself. So it's either virtual or if you are in Oberlin or in the area, Northeast Ohio region, Cleveland area, we can do it right here at Fold Space Studio, which is really awesome too. But it's the same price either way. Uh, I'll provide paper. So even if you can't come to my studio in person, I'll send you a little pack of paper included in the fee, right? Uh, and you can give them as gifts. I will send you a certificate if you want to give it as a, as a gift to someone. Uh, or you can just buy them for yourself. And there's actually no limit on how many classes you can purchase. So maybe you want to get a bunch for friends and family. Or maybe you want to just prepay for a block of like eight private lessons one-on-one -on -one with me. Um, either way, it's fine. No limit there. And each lesson is personalized. Um, we can pretty much fold whatever you like, and we can do everything from you know, introductory, beginner level, on up through high, intermediate, low, complex. Uh, we, I don't get too super complex with my, uh, my classes, um, but, uh, but it's this nice sweet spot between you know, easy and accessible and then slightly challenging, high, intermediate, low, complex. Okay? Uh, and and this deal is valid through the end of December, so through the end of the year. And if you're interested in picking up some lessons for you or your loved ones, you just email me, please, at james at foldspacestudio.com. And we'll set everything up from there, like the scheduling, the payment, shipment of the paper if need be. So, yes, this is my, my holiday offer now through the end of the year. So, and just let me know if you have any questions. All right, there we go. Yes, I know that was a bit of a slog, but hey, you made it. And looking here at the chat, all right, yay. Cool, Ellie, your stands up. I'm so happy to hear that. 
Lee and Carol Hodson, thanks for this fun model. We'll go on the table tomorrow. Very cool, nice. Cool, Brent, you're stood up too. That's awesome, great. And Joanne, Adam, thank you so much for joining. Gwen, Danny, it's been a pleasure. Uh, okay, yeah, so next time we'll be online. We'll be a week from Friday, December 1st, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is noon here on the East Coast. And I'm trying different broadcast times to, you know, just kind of be able to hit different corners of the world. Now, I, I, you know, I realize I can't please everybody all the time as far as the time zones go, but I am going to be sort of like scheduling different times, trying different times, weekends, daytimes, evenings, that kind of thing, too. And remember, next week, big exciting announcement, so please tune in. And, oh, hey, Aneta, thanks for joining. Cool, good to see you, too. And, okay, so I think that's about it. Ah, boy, that was fun, but I'm tired. Oh, yeah, please post pictures. Oh, I almost forgot. One more, one more thing. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can find me on Instagram at mr.jamespeak or at Foldspace Origami. Uh, or you can find me online at foldspacestudio.com. And if you'd like to join my email list to stay abreast of all Foldspace happenings coming up, there's you can subscribe to my email list at the bottom of my website, or on the homepage of my website, foldspacestudio.com. Just scroll to the bottom. There's a little widget where you can join the mailing list. I think that's the best way to stay uh, up to date on all of the different happenings. And as you know, things can happen at the last minute. So. <laughs> So yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to try not to be too last minute about it. But, um, but yeah, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. You all stay safe. Have a wonderful time with friends and family if that's what you're doing. If not, I hope you have a nice time on your own. Fold some turkeys and post them. And tag me if you think of it. Um, okay, thanks again, everyone. Um, we'll see you next time, okay? Happy folding. <laughs>